Hello, Barbara fans. My name is Scott Ryan, and I'm here with everybody's best Barbara fan, Matt Howe. <laughs> Matt, uh, thanks for doing this with me. Uh, tell everyone what cover this is behind me. Well, um, that is the uh, the cover of my forthcoming book, Barbara Strikes and the Music, the album's singles, uh, coming uh, April 2023 um something's coming something good <laughs> <laughs> and you know what i was thinking the other day i was listening to i'm five and she said on april 24th and i'm like how have we not used that in our promos for the oh, book oh right you know on on the tv show she gives a different date i think it's elliot gould's birthday yeah, she wanted to honor her husband. Anyway, but yeah, on the on the album, it's it's uh, April twenty fourth. Um, so what we're gonna do from now to when the book comes out, Matt and I are gonna go through all of Barbara's albums. Now, the first thing is this is not what the book is. What you're seeing here are just two Barbara fans <laughs> freaking out over what we love about Barbara. The book does go through every album, but that is more of an in-depth look at who wrote the songs and all of that good stuff. But we just want to get you excited about the book and about Barbara and her 60 years with Columbia. Um, Matt, I, I sort of pitched the book, but for people who are just learning about the book, what is what is this book? This book is... Um, uh... Uh, a year by year, a chronological look at Barbara's albums, starting with um, "I Can Get It For You Wholesale." Actually, starting in 1955 with um, the uh, the recordings that she did with her mother at um, at a, a recording studio in New York. But it, it, each year, it, it, it takes a look at, at all of her albums, um, and then we we interrupt for um, the greatest hits albums. And we interrupt for um, the albums in which she uh, uh, had soundtracks, you know, like Prince of Tides or Mirror Has Two Faces, but basically chronologically looking at each album in her, in her uh, discography, uh, official albums. And um, I take a deep, deep dive. I, I, uh, I look at the, the, the songs that are selected and, um, and just, you know, information about uh, how the album came about. Yeah. And we need your pre-orders. It helps us to print this book. This book is 300 pages. It's hardback. It's oversized. It's full color. It's on photo paper. So go right now to TuckerDSPress.com. That's TuckerDSPress. I got it right there on your screen. And pre-order this book because... Yes, the book comes out on April 24th, but those who pre-order get an early advanced copy. So that's For our sure. thank you to you. Yeah. So what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks is we're going to go through all the albums and we're going to pick our favorite song today and just sort of, you know, so you can see how much, how many songs we've had to go through to get this book uh, done. So we're going to skip I Can Get It Whole for Sale and Pins and Needles, but we don't skip those in the book. Uh, we're just right, going right. to we're going to do like her real ones. So we're going to start those with are, the Barbara those, Streisand. Those albums are pre her signing the contract with Columbia. But yeah, they, right. here's the they, first official album. Yeah, the, the Barbara Streisand album. Uh, what is your what? Is, and by the way, wait a minute. Matt and I both love Barbara with all our hearts, but we agree almost on nothing. So I am going to be so excited <laughs> to see how many of our favorites cross over. I'm going to guess that it's going to be less than 10%. But so I can't wait to see because I have no idea what he's picking. He has no idea what I'm picking. Uh, first album, best song. Cry Me a River. I mean, uh, it's it's so obvious, but as I write in the book, um, it's such a crazy choice for the opening song of her first album. So dramatic, so crazy. And of course, you know, you and I are listening to uh, the Bonsoir CD this week. I mean, uh, even the live version on the Bonsoir album is just crazy, crazy good. Cry Me a River, the first song so dramatic so uh 
crazy that she chose that. You? My pick is come to the supermarket. Um, I <laughs> Which is so much song. fun. It is just yeah. so much fun. And it's it's what I love most about 60s Barbara. One place we do agree is that we really like those live versions from the first three albums more than the studio version. Um, right, right. I feel like they they uh, reined her in a little bit. Um, so right. for me, I've listened to Come to the Supermarket so many times. And when she did the 2006 tour, I saw her in Columbus, Ohio. And she like okay. teased that she was going to do it because, you know, she was answering uh, things out of paper. You know, no one asked me to put a question in, but supposedly from the audience. <laughs> the Q&A, and, the Ask Barbara, right? Right. And she said, oh, would you sing Come to the Supermarket? And I started to freak out. I'm like, is she really going to sing this? But <laughs> she didn't. Wouldn't that have been amazing? Wow. Yeah, didn't happen. <laughs> the second album i don't know how you get this zoom is so clever look at this there we go if i put it on ah you know there you go stands. the second album what do you got second album i i'm gonna go with um as far as favorite song on the second album i'm gonna go with gotta move i, I just i like that song so much um I, I like the 1966 color me barbara uh version better but this one is so crazy good with the bongos and um you know peter matz wrote that for her um as a get off the stage you know kind of song and did, um did you ever interact with peter matz i never had no yeah. no it's so sad and he song. died um god in the 90s i think anyway uh i wish i would have um, but Peter Matz uh, uh, is a genius, and um, I like this song so much, um, especially the bongos. <laughs> um, How about pick, you? How about my, you? My pick is Down With Love. I have right. always loved um, the end of it and how she mixes it together. And I mean, of course, we're here to celebrate Barbara, but I don't know if you've ever heard Audra's version on The Leading I Lady. I have, and she sings... I don't Barbara, care if he's rich or da 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 yeah, she, da. And she does a tribute to Barbara. She does some Barbara songs in there, she which does, I think um, is cool. I know he's around with us. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I mean, it's so amazing. It, oh, it is Audra's, amazing. Audra McDonald is who we're talking about, folks. Yeah. Um, if you uh, YouTube uh, her. Um, yeah, she never Version. recorded it for an album, but she did do it on the Leading Ladies uh, PBS oh, special. And uh, I love but that Down with show. Love is my pick. Uh, I, I that's my okay. favorite one. I will say I like the second album better than the first. It's just me, but um, yeah, no, no, no. Um, and I think in the book I talk about um, an old Peter Matz um, interview that um, they got a little bit more money to do the second album, and it sounds like it. Yeah, you can feel it. It's it's a, yeah. just a little better produced album. Now we go to the third album, uh, <laughs> which I think is my least favorite 60s album. I mean, we're not here to be negative, but I really, this is not, it was hard for me to pick a favorite song off this album. I know you're not a fan of the third album. I'm really not. It's the, it's, there's, there's only a couple of Barbara albums that I'm not a fan of, and, and that is definitely one of them. Well, my opinion is I like the album. I like the third album, but I think that so many of the songs she did better live. Right. That's what you said in the book. And I totally agree. It's not the yeah. song selection. It's the arrangement right. or something. There's something weird about the arrangement on that album. Well, and maybe, you know, she's um, feeling her oats or whatever the expression is where she's just learning about recording and uh, she seems sort of restrained on this album, if that mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, and you have a but great I mean, quote from her in the book that we won't say now because you got to get the book that really <laughs> helped me to understand that album. You had a great quote from her. Um, so, yeah. but it's just I don't know. I feel like the first two albums are gangbusters, and then this third one's a little slow. I'm going to say my yeah. pick for this one was I had myself a true love, which was really my. I mean, there was no contest on this one for me. What, I'm so excited to hear what your pick is. I love that song a lot, although I like the live version of the Bonsoir better. I mean, I'm going to say 
bewitched, even though uh, the Judy Garland version, uh, the Judy Garland TV show version live is uh, better. But Bewitched is um, hard to ignore. I mean, it's such a great, great vocal and arrangement. I, yeah, I totally agree with you about the Judy Garland. I actually have a copy captured from the DVD. I captured into an MP3, and that's what I listened to. Yeah, over it. me too. <laughs> I did the same <laughs> thing. That's yeah, so it's just a better version. Again, we. I will not about. be ignored. Yeah. <laughs> um, now we go to Funny Girl original Broadway cast album. Yeah. Uh, in the special yeah. edition vinyl, whose name is mentioned in this? No, oh, that would be me. Edition. Yeah, I'm oh, so proud of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I helped on the 50th anniversary. Um, uh, I'm and Jay Landers uh, hooked me up for sure. But um, I helped with some research and some photos. So you know, a That's little bit. So exciting. I, 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 I I helped a little bit, yeah, which is great. What, uh, what's your what's your um what's yours? Uh, this um, one is an easy girl. one for me again because you know we're not talking about the movie. So to me, it's Cornette Man. Uh, I love oh. Cornette Man so much. I wish it would have been in the film <laughs> uh, because it, it's a you know one of the things you say in the book that I have never really put together is how few times Barbara sung with like a big band sound and I've never thought of that before but this right. one kind of has that feel it's a different arrangement for what Barbara normally does and I absolutely love Cornet Man nice I'm gonna go with um who are you now who mm -hmm. are you now and of course you know the the new um uh Broadway uh production with Leah Michelle previously Beanie Feldstein does something gorgeous where they mix who are you now with with people and they have uh Nick and Fanny singing together that being said the original recording of who are you now I, I just don't know why she never sang this live over the years, what a gorgeous song. Who are you now? I it, mean, it's just... Yeah, that, that was actually my second pick. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, I love, um, I know he's around with the sun. You know, that one, I can't, right. what can I think of what that's called? Uh, the music that makes me dance. Yeah, the music that makes me dance, but the version right. on Love Like Ours, that is so much better that, you know, that'll probably be my pick from that album uh, <laughs> when we I get there i love the new one there um right okay right, so right. what we're doing in these episodes we're just doing five because we you know you don't have all day you're at work right now watching this while your boss isn't looking you're scheming <laughs> and so we want to be quick you know so our last album we're doing today is people um so <laughs> and i know for a fact you did not pick my song and i love that we didn't pick the same but you go first <laughs> what did you pick from people Oh, yeah. well, you're thinking, you know I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, yes. you, you ready? Go I'll go it. because you go. didn't pick mine because you don't, you, you mentioned not liking this song in the book, and that's Lord and Master. Um, oh. I, I like this song, it is so my favorite weird. song off here, and I know what you're saying. You talk about that maybe it didn't age as well, but I right. think because it's from a show, it's not like Barbara is condoning being a slave to a man uh i mean that <laughs> right, is not right. the point of the song but there's just it's a very different arrangement and you know that's when we i love barbara is when she takes a song that you know and does it in a new way and the arrangement is so striking uh it's my favorite pick from that album okay so uh, i congratulations that's fantastic I'm gonna go with Love is a Bore because I think um, the arrangement is crazy good and the lyric and and the just um, audacity of the song is so much fun for me. And it's up-tempo and um, I love Love is a Bore. That's, that's for me. Oh, I lost your I just, audio. No, oh, it was just for a second. I bumped the screen. But because I was looking, because I thought it was interesting that we both picked songs for arrangements. And not surprising, both songs arranged by Peter Matz. Um, 
I'm going to throw, okay. you know, as we wrap this episode up, again, please go to TuckerDSPress.com. Don't go to Amazon. Jeff Bezos doesn't need to go to space again, okay? <laughs> we would like to go to space. Um, thanks for the support. Marty the Martian. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll be back next week. Please subscribe to Matt's YouTube or Instagram. We're going to keep these going. And as always, thank you so much for the support. And we'll see you next week.